Good morning, guys. So just a reminder, we're in our journals. The first two pages should be blank. We're going to be putting some stuff in there, table of contents, so we can find all of our stuff. You should then have parent functions on the next two pages. Notice that I have numbered them in the top outer corner. And today we're going to be doing the first of many for key attributes of functions. The key attribute we're going to be talking about today is domain. and range. So just a little note for myself. Then I always find it helpful to put the date. Let me see if I can get that to focus a little better. That's a little better. All right, so the key things we need to discuss. This should be mostly reviewed with one new thing. So we already remember from last time that domain is X and range is Y. So for domain and range, we need to know what all the different symbols mean. So if it's like this, this is less than or equal to, less than or equal to. This one is, oh sorry, I did the wrong direction. Greater than or equal to. Notice the line underneath. That comes from an equal sign. If you were to just draw an equal sign, it's already there, it's hidden. There's just this little thing on top. They just combined it into one symbol. You don't have to write that twice, that was purely for you. Then if we do this symbol, this is just less than. So this is where you're not actually allowed to go all the way up to the point. You can get as close as you want without touching, but you may not actually touch. Same thing here greater than. Now for both of these, you're looking at a closed circle. So you're going to fill in the circle. I'm going to write closed. And I'm also going to write solid because it's a solid line. This is the other. This is going to be an open circle. And this is going to be a dashed line. Now this should all be review. I'm going to give you the next level. So the next level is doing interval notation. So we're going to go interval notation. This just means we're going to go, let's say I had 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 9. That's going to translate to an interval. The easiest way is to put your numbers just like you would on a point, but there's a trick. Anytime it has the underline, so this or this less than or greater than, you used a closed bracket, which means included. Notice it's square. So this means in included. So these are both included because they're both underlined. Let's go up a little bit. Let's say negative two to 10. Same idea negative 2 comma 10 and now I've got to look at what kind of brackets well this one's included so I know how to put a square on this one but this is not included so this means so this included means closed excluded means open 
I'm just going to put a parenthesis. And since these are both x values, I'm just going to label them as domains. I'm going to go to the, let's say that we have, there's a couple more scenarios that you could have. So we're going to walk you through all of them. Let's go 0, 2. Again, I'm doing domain because it's x's. Same thing if it's y's, you just put an r for range. These are both open. So it looks like a point. It's a little bit confusing if you don't have it labeled as domain. What if I did something like this? Okay, this one. If it's a one-sided inequality, use infinity or negative infinity for the other side. Okay, so I'll show you. We don't have this side. So I'm going to just put an infinity here for my own. And you're not allowed to touch infinity. It's not possible because there's always a larger infinity. That might break your brain a little bit, but you can't touch it. So this is an open and open. So an infinity is just an eight on its side So here we added this, just to remind ourselves. We added this part. So let's do another one of those so that you have in your notes what happens if it's the other direction. Picking a crazy big number. Well, I don't have the infinity on this side. Well, this side, the infinity is going to be negative. So when it's below, it's going to be the negative. So I've got negative infinity. And then 179. We're going to close parenthesis on this one. Oh, I need to do a square bracket. And then this has to be an open on the infinity. And that is pretty much it. I will do... Um, another short video to show you how uh, some examples for your homework. Let me pause. All right, guys, so I'm gonna do some examples with you just like you're gonna see on your classwork today. So I'm gonna start with how to make it bigger. It won't let you zoom in and out if you use your mouse pad or touch screen or anything like that. You have to come over to this magnifying glass. I come over and I like about 100%. Then what you're going to do is two different things. Will it let me? I should be able to. I'm going to click here and I'm just going to put my name in. So this I'm just putting a text box in. This is going to let me type in it. Notice that it's typing through the line. Well, that's annoying. So I'm just going to adjust it up a little bit. Not a big deal. As long as I can read it, it's not a big deal. Then domain. Here, remember, we're doing interval notation. So open on both sides. Open circle. So I'm going to do parentheses on both sides. Now to get domain, again, it's your x values. You're going to, I'm going to try to draw. Well, let me draw. Can I do a box? Can I make it a fat box? There we go. Can I have it be fat, please? Thank you. Oh, it doesn't let me, doesn't let me make it nice and square. Well, I was trying. So I'm just drawing a quick box and I think it'll help you see. 
If I go straight up, I'm at negative 3. Domain is always left to right. So I'm going to type in negative 3. The negative is by the 0, comma, and then all the way over, we're at positive 3. 3. I'm done with domain. Grab a text box. Let's go range. Range is low to high. So we're at negative 4 at the bottom. And we're going all the way up to 2. Open on both of them. And then function. This is pretty simple. Does it pass the vertical line test? Well, it doesn't matter how many vertical lines I touch this with. It will only touch one time. So yes, this is. You can write the whole word or you can just write the letter. I don't care. As long as I can tell what you mean, I'm good with it. Let's do a more complicated one. I think that this one and this one look the most complicated. So I'm going to add a text box. And then just because I'm lazy, I'm going to click it. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Control V to paste. Control V to paste. Okay. So now, domain. Wait, I double clicked until I saw my cursor. I'm going to go ahead and put an open. And then, oop, I touched my screen, sorry. And then right here, that's a closed. So to get a closed bracket, I have to um, get the square bracket. It should be kind of close to the P on your keyboard. On the, all the way on the right side, by the delete, the backspace, the enter, right over there. So again, I'm going to take from this circle and go straight up until I hit the axis. That's negative 1. I'm going to take this closed. They, on this program, it does a square so that it's easy to tell it's closed. Go straight down and we're at 3. Done. Again, I double clicked until my cursor showed up. At the bottom, we're open. At the top, we're closed. The bottom, we're at negative 4. The top, we're at 2. And yes, this is a function. And that is it. One more, just to triple check. Left to right. At the left, it's closed. At the right, we're open. Closed goes straight up, negative 5. All the way to the right, goes straight down. We're at positive 5. Range, low to high again. Low is closed, high is open. We are looking at negative 3. See how I'm going straight over to the y-axis? Negative 3. And straight over, we're at 2. Vertical line test? Yep, it passes. We're just looking to see if it crosses twice. I'm going to do this one because this has a couple of things that the other ones didn't have. So let me grab my text box. One, two, just copy and paste, control C, control V. Okay, now notice that the dots are on the same line, but we want the left side of this. Will this let me do a shape? Yeah, this will let me do a square. That's faster. So I'm looking for, then I'm just making the inside of the box transparent so I can see. So I click on this and click transparent. So it's like wrapping a present. I want everything inside, nothing sticking out. This isn't perfect, but come on now. Let's not take all day to get a perfect box. So notice the left side of the box. That's part of a curve, and the curve is a solid line, so it gets a closed bracket. Then, come on, let me click. And that's at negative 2. So negative 2, comma, all the way over to the right side of the box. That's at 4. 
and that is open circles both top and bottom. If one was open and one was closed, we take the closed. Closed trumps open. Range. From the bottom, we're at negative 4, and it's open. Again, the negative is by the 0. At the top, we're at positive 3, and it's open. And this one is not a function. Notice how if I were to draw a line, I would hit 1, 2. Anywhere on here, it only has to happen one time for it to fail the vertical line test. So this fails a vertical line test basically everywhere. And I think that's it. Good luck, guys.